All right, so here's the deal. The Kraft keyboard is probably one of the most satisfying scissor switch type keyboards you will ever type on, but it's got some problems. Let's talk about it. When seated on a desk, the Logitech Kraft is probably one of my favorite keyboards looks wise. It's got that graphite styling, you've got rounded edges, it's just an overall clean look. There's no cables in the way, it's pretty much a minimalist dream. Even the circular dial, the main selling point of the keyboard, is unobtrusive and looks pleasing to the eye. I'll get into the dial that Logitech calls the crown later, but first let's rip into this keyboard. So obviously this is a scissor switch membrane type keyboard. It's not a mechanical keyboard. You're not gonna get the most ideal gaming or typing experience on this keyboard. And you know, the travel is decent. You got about 1.8 millimeters of travel here. It's nothing crazy high, but it's to be expected for this type of keyboard. The keycaps are slightly concave and they conform to your fingers a little bit, which I do really like. And if you actually wave your fingers over the keyboard, it'll actually light up with this nice backlighting. The backlighting is very even. Um, it looks great, but I do have a problem with the stabilizers, particularly with the space bar. So if I tap the space bar, Every so often you'll hear a bit of a squeak, almost like a little tiny mouse is inside your keyboard. And uh, it's, it's not pleasant at all. Let me just do a little bit of a typing test for you. There seems to be a particular space uh, on the actual space bar that if you hit in that little tiny zone, it produces a minimal squeak and it's actually starting to drive me a little bonkers. Overall though, the keyboard is actually very comfortable to type on. So it's slightly elevated by this silver bar here underneath. As you can see, there's no adjustable feet or anything here, but there is just that slight little bit of elevation there from this actual bar here that holds the electronics and the battery. Key spacing and layout is all great with dedicated buttons for both Windows and Mac, which I love. Uh, and you do get some custom buttons here up at the top, like a calculator, um, screen capture, and a few other things that are along the function row. The numbers one, two, and three on this keyboard, right here, are special. So they're designed to actually allow you to quickly switch between devices. So for example, if I'm on my PC, uh, that's the one setting or preset. And then let's say I wanna pair my iPad Pro to the second preset, all I have to do is to switch between the two devices is hit the one or the two. And it's actually very, very quick. I haven't been able to notice any discernible lag either from either the Logitech unifying receiver that comes with the keyboard or just through its plain Bluetooth mode, which is Excellent. There have been a few people saying that they're running into disconnection issues every once in a while, but I haven't noticed that on my particular unit as of yet. And I've been using this for about a month or so now. So battery life on the Craft is good in some ways and bad in others. If you're using it with the backlighting on, you're actually gonna get about a week or less which is not that great, but if you're using it with the backlight off, like I do, you get months easily. Considering my Logitech G900, actually only gets about 30 hours of use before it dies, that's not bad. All right, now to address the two huge elephants in the room, the crown and the price. First up, let's talk about the crown. The crown is this amazing little tactile device here that's situated up on the top left of the keyboard. And if I turn it, you might be able to hear that, what they call ratcheting sound. And that's because built into the crown is a mechanical device that gives you tactile feedback. And this can be switched on and off in the software. So there's a couple of good things here and there's a couple of bad things here. First off, there's three different functions. You can just turn it regularly and that will be one function. You can press in on it and that will be another function. And then you can press in and turn and that will be a third function. So there's three different things you can do with the crown in different applications and they will automatically switch depending on what application you're in. My favorite application of the crown is actually in Premiere Pro where I do most of my editing. I have it set up so that if I turn it once, just click once to the right, it will advance the frame right. And if I click back, it will advance backwards. And this is just a really, really handy feature for navigating uh, the timeline and even just doing some very specific cuts and edits. I will say that it does get a little annoying when you're switching applications though. For example, if I'm just in my regular desktop uh, or I'm just browsing Chrome or something like that, um, I normally have it set to change volume. So that's what I'm doing the most with the crown. So if I switch into Premiere Pro or I switch into After Effects or some other program and I turn it and, and that program has a specific profile already set up for it, it's doing something different than changing the volumes. It's just something I'll have to get used to, I guess. The literal worst thing about this keyboard though, is the price. I can absolutely 100% without a doubt tell you right now 
that it is not worth the asking price of the Logitech Craft. Logitech wants 200 US dollars for this keyboard and that is just not worth it in my books. I mean, yes, it's a beautiful keyboard. It feels nice to type on. It's wireless. There's no cables anywhere. It's got this crown thing that does a lot of different things, but it's not worth $200. It's just not. All right, let me just be honest here. I did switch to this keyboard from my mechanical gaming keyboard, and it's just, the only reason I did was because A, I really, really like the clean, minimalist look of it. And that's really important to me for some stupid reason. Um, but also it's, it's very useful for productivity apps like video editing and stuff like that. But if you're not the kind of person that spends hours and hours and hours inside of video editing apps, and you're not the kind of person that really cares about this minimalist design, I'm telling you right now, avoid this keyboard. It's not worth it. Before you go, I just wanna let you guys know that I'm active on Twitter and Instagram and even Discord. So head to the description down below and click on those links and follow me at those places because I'd love to connect with you guys a little bit more. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already to support my content. Thanks for watching and have a great day.